Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. Welcome to the start of another week. It is Monday. I hope you're doing well wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world. Jam-packed show today, reliving yesterday's game at the Emirates. Arsenal 2, Liverpool 2. Dramatic night once again following at the Arsenal. Uh, interesting game as well. And so lots and lots to unpick from it in today's show. We're going to go over the big talking points for the game, give my thoughts on that. Some of the ridiculous reaction that has been that I've certainly seen and read and watched since the full-time whistle as well. I'm going to give my thoughts on that. I'm going to talk all about all the controversy in terms of the refereeing decision. Lots of people believe in Arsenal were robbed in that game yesterday because of that late, late decision by Anthony Taylor not to, uh, well, I'd say rule out Arsenal's goal. He'd blown the whistle a fair while before the ball went in the net, hadn't he? But this decision to give the foul in the build-up to Arsenal having the ball in the net for a potentially winning goal. So we're going to talk about that, give my thoughts on that as well. Got lots of reaction from you guys to what was a dramatic, dramatic night at the Emirates. I'll do my player ratings as well. Some fantastic performances, I thought, from Arsenal. Some Arsenal players in that game yesterday. But it was a it was a really, really interesting game to watch. It was an exciting game to watch. It was it was a game of two halves, really. I thought Arsenal were absolutely superb for the first half. I thought the second half was pretty even. Um and then I, I don't think you can say that Liverpool didn't deserve the equaliser. I thought they were probably just about the stronger team in the second half, but it was pretty even. Arsenal kept them at arm's length for most of it, but just picked off once. One little error, one error of judgment, and uh, they got picked off by Mo Salah to make it 2-2. And I think at the end of it, you look at the stats and everything like that, it was probably, probably a fair result, but Arsenal feeling very, very hard done by this morning. And I have to say, I'm not surprised given some of the... Um, decisions that went against them in the game. But first half, I thought they were great. I thought they came out probably the first five minutes. It was a little bit, they sort of felt their way into game. But after that, I thought they were excellent. I mean, Saka's goal early on was superb, you know, back in the team and just back at his very, very best. Robertson did not have a clue what to do with him. Fantastic ball over the the top from Ben White. And then Saka doing what he does best. It was just so ruthless and clinical and clean. It was just a brilliant, brilliant goal from him. Obviously, Arsenal lined up a little bit differently because of um, no William Saliba. So Ben White was moved into centre-back. We had Thomas Partey playing at right-back during Timber was declared fit. And he played at left-back Saka in the team, obviously, as well, after a little bit of timeout. Loved that pass from Ben White to release Bukai Saka. Thought it was excellent. So it was a perfect start for Arsenal. Exactly what you would have wanted. Liverpool had not really had a sniff, but then 20 minutes gone, they get themselves a corner and it was just a very simple corner routine. Flipped on at the near post. Van Dijk unmarked. Glance in 1-1. Poor goal from Arsenal to concede. Soft goal, really. Uh, another one conceded from a set piece. Two in a row in the Premier League now, if you count the game against Bournemouth as well. So it's 1-1. I thought Arsenal were then really excellent for the final 20 minutes going into the halftime interval. Really, really pinned Liverpool back. Um, scored a good goal through Marino as much as VAR tried to rule it out. We had to sit in the stadium for about three minutes or whatever it was. It was ridiculous. Uh, waiting to see if the decision was goal or not. Brilliant ball in from Declan Rice. Lovely header for Marino, who I thought had a really good game. Marino, we'll talk about him a little bit later. I'm going to go through my player ratings. And it was a deserved lead for Arsenal at the break. I thought 2-1. Don't think Liverpool can have any complaints. Obviously, the second half changed. And this is where a lot of the reaction comes in that I've seen that I think, quite frankly, is utterly ridiculous. I, I've Just going home from the game, I was sitting on the train, scrolling through Twitter, and it's just Sky Sports video clips of Roy Keane and everyone in the studio, Jamie Carragher, talking about how negative Arsenal were and how Arteta has morphed into Jose Mourinho type manager and Roy Keane saying he's worried about Arsenal's mentality. I'm sorry, it's just, and I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here for this one because I feel, I just feel they're being really hard done by here at Arsenal in terms of how they played and they were not put really put under much pressure by Liverpool. They, you look at that back four that they had on the pitch, but for the last sort of half an hour of the game, you had Thomas Partey said, I mean, field a plan at right back. You had Ben White shuffle across to, to centre back. You then had Jakob Kivior coming in and playing centre back. You had an 18 year old playing at left back. I mean, it couldn't be more makeshift. And you're up against this Liverpool team and the attacking threat that they have. Of course, maybe you're going to have to think, you know what, we need to sit back and protect this defence a little bit. I don't think Arsenal just camped in their box by any means. I don't think Liverpool really caused them any problems. I just thought it was a very even second half. Yes, Arsenal didn't have the attacking intent maybe they had in the first half, but they also had a, a fit, probably a 50-60% fit Bukaya Saka playing, a 50-60% fit during Timber playing before he went off. So basically, you know, you just had players in 
out of position. You had unfit players. Everyone doing a job trying to get a win against a very good Liverpool side. And they were so, so close to doing that as well. I just don't see how you can look at that game as a whole and then just spent basically all of the narrative after the game by Sky and by the pundits, which has then been picked up and has now become the sort of mainstream topic of conversation after the game, is that Arsenal was somehow overly negative in this game. They weren't overly negative in this game. It was just a really even game between two very good teams. You had a real makeshift Arsenal side, certainly in the second half, given the injuries and the players who were forced to go off and players playing out of position, who were doing what they could do to try and win. The one time, really, they did really push forward and try and get the third goal, they get picked off because of that makeshift defence got exposed. And so what I just don't understand really what you are supposed to do and why all of the narrative after full time has seemed to be about this Arsenal team and their mentality and being overly negative. I just think it's, it's just really cheap punditry and I just think it's poor. I really think it's poor. Would I have loved to have seen Arsenal produce a similar second half as they did in the first half? Yes. Realistically, did I expect that to happen? No. Did I think they were going to tie it? Yes. Did I think they were going to have to try and sit back once the defensive changes happened, once Gabriel went off the pitch? You've got basically no William Sleeper or Gabriel in the centre-backs. Do I think they're going to have to sit back and try and protect that back four a little bit? 100%. And I thought they did it really, really well, except for one time in the second half. And that was the one time that they did suddenly decide to bomb forward and leave themselves exposed at the back. And that was when this Liverpool team, with the quality of they have, going forward, expose them and got the equaliser. So I just think it's really poor some of the um, some of the way this game has been summed up after the game. I think it's really unfair as well, I have to say. Right, rant over. Breathe a little bit. I'll be going back on a rant in a little bit when I talk about Anthony Taylor. <laughs> this is what Mikel Arteta said after the game. He said, I'm very proud of the team, especially with the situation we are going through at the moment and you probably cannot imagine. But overall, I think, especially the first half, it was total domination. We were really, really good, really sharp, really efficient, really determined and the results should have been bigger. Without conceding anything, basically we've gone from two goals away, which is a disappointing part. The fact we couldn't see the game off, especially looking at ourselves, the two things that we didn't do particularly well and obviously about other aspects. On whether the team ran out of steam a little bit in the second half, he said, I'm more disappointed and frustrated about one thing that we didn't do, that we had to do in the second half. The physical part we'll look at in the stats. The stats I know are dropping. We had better stats in the second half in many games, especially individually. Some positives like Mikel, for example, hasn't played 90 minutes for five months, probably since the Euros or whatever. So a lot of positives. Um, are going to take and keep on going. So, yeah, like he says there as well, understandably in the second half, the stats would have shown they did drop off a little bit. Maybe he could have made some subs earlier. Maybe he could have brought on Ranieri and Jesus a little bit earlier just to freshen things up a little bit. But I do think the game was on such a knife edge at that point. Arsenal already had a teenager on the pitch um, as well. Maybe that was that, that could have influenced him a little bit more uh, in terms of when he did make those attacking substitutions. Um but yeah, I thought overly on the whole, I, I came away from that thinking Arsenal, given what they're having to endure at the moment, injuries-wise, given what more injuries they had to suffer on the pitch yesterday, I came away from that game thinking, you know what, they've done really, really well here. And I, I, I thought they deserved an awful lot of credit. So I was just really surprised coming out afterwards, um, coming back on the train and sort of reading the reaction to it, thinking, if I watched the same match here as these people in the studio who have been paid thousands and thousands of pounds to basically just talk rubbish with no real punditry in there it's just never it's just I, I just think it needs to be better this is the you know with the punditry on sky for these sort of games this is the we're all having to watch this we're all paying lots and lots of money to be able to watch this with our subscriptions every single month and i just think we deserve better and better analysis and better punditry rather than just this it just feels really poor <laughs> what I'm having to watch week in week out when it comes to punditry nowadays I just I really really do think that uh I, I, yeah maybe maybe I've got my Arsenal bias on maybe it's I've got my Arsenal hat and I'm seeing it through red tinted glasses or whatever but I just feel they've been really unfairly targeted I mean Liverpool Arsenal it's always been it's I've read so many times on like Liverpool were there for the taking for Arsenal yesterday surely it's the other way around surely Arsenal were there for the taking for Liverpool yesterday, this Liverpool side that everyone's been hating, surely Arsenal were literally there for the taking, especially in the second half after everything went on, and yet they didn't take they didn't take advantage of it. They got a point, and I think if anyone's dropped two points in that game, personally, I think it was Liverpool. But 
again, maybe that's me seeing it through red tinted glasses. Okay, now let's talk about this decision now, shall we? I was at the other end of the ground for this. I had absolutely no idea what this, what the goal had been ruled out for. None of us did. Um, I cannot believe he has given a foul for this. I genuinely can't. It makes me laugh as well that I see Liverpool fans on social media saying, oh, it's a clear foul. It's utter rubbish. Not one Liverpool player. Look how many Liverpool players are around that instant. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the screen grab of the instant where uh, Kivior goes over Sabozlai, wasn't it, to win the header before it falls to Kai Havertz. Um, not one Liverpool player in the picture complains or calls for a foul in that situation. So Bosley just turns his back. He doesn't jump. He makes no attempt to win the ball. Kivior is just stronger, wins the ball, gets the leap on him and wins the header cleanly. It's not a foul. I cannot believe he's given that as a foul. I genuinely can't. I also don't understand why he doesn't blow straight away. He watches the ball then go to Kai Havertz and just as Havertz is about to lift it over the keeper, that's when he decides to whistle instead of letting the play play out if he's not totally sure surely you're supposed to let the play out and then if the ball ends up in the net you it gets checked by VAR and you make the decision that way I can't believe he's given that as a foul I just think it's awful Mikel said afterwards that I prefer not to comment when he was asked if he was told why it was disallowed he said no nothing I'm sure we'll get some clarity or a letter afterwards I don't know I'm looking forward to how it's spun now well I say I'm looking forward to that's obviously sarc sarcasm I'm not but it will be spun it'll be like oh he made the right decision blah 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 by all the usual usual uh, heads who are going to do it. But that is, frankly, a ridiculous decision that has cost Arsenal a game. Were they robbed like a lot of people are saying they were? I, I don't know. We don't know if, because the whistle did go. So the players, some of the Liverpool players did stop once the ball, ball, got, ball got to have it. So would it have played out the same way? Would the ball have ended up in the net? I don't know. It's all hypothetical. We won't know. But I just cannot believe that play was not allowed to continue to see what happened because he's right there. I don't see where he sees a foul in this. And this isn't just an Arsenal thing. It's just a Premier League wide thing. It's frankly ridiculous official. I don't believe in corruption. I know lots of people do and I see it all the time. I do not believe that it's corrupt. I just think it is bad officiating. Really, really bad officiating. And that's a more that's where I know everyone says, oh, there's corruption rife in the Premier League when it comes to officials. I just don't believe that. I don't want to let myself believe that. And I don't believe that. I just think where it lets itself down is just the actual quality of the people making the decisions. There are just not, it's not good enough when you see European football, when you see Champions League football and you see the referees come here and referees games, they are always so much better. I don't believe it's anything to do with corruption. I just think it's down to the standard of officiating that is just simply not good at us. Look at the West Ham Man United game yesterday. The penalty for West Ham in the last minute, as much as I love to laugh at Manchester United, it was a disgrace of a decision. It was never a penalty in the middle of the million years. David Coote is staring at it and he does not give a penalty. And for some reason, Michael Oliver in VAR decides to get involved and tells him to go and check the decision that he should be a penalty. Now, Michael Oliver is a very senior referee. Does David Coote feel a bit um, pressured into having to give this penalty because one of his seniors is telling him to go and have a look. I don't know, but quite, I mean, why he didn't stand firm when he went up and looked at that monitor and just back his own decision. He was staring at it at real time in the pitch. It was never a penalty. And it was just another example of the horrific officiating that we're seeing on a weekly basis that are affecting these games at the big, big moments. This was a huge moment in the game. This plays out, Arsenal get the winner. They win 3-2 and it's a fantastic win given the circumstances against a potential title rival. Now they've dropped another two points. Um, I'm not saying that's the only reason Arsenal didn't win the game yesterday. By any means, they didn't They didn't do a th things good enough at times. The two goals they conceded were really, really poor. But that is not a foul. Not in a million years. And that's before we even talk about how Virgil van Dijk is just allowed to basically kick Kai Havertz. I don't know what, I don't know what constitutes violent conduct anymore. I think after seeing... Bruno not sent off last year in the Newcastle game for that forearm on Jorginho. I have no idea what constitutes violent conduct anymore. If you're allowed to do what Bruno did and not get sent off, then you're clearly allowed to do what Van Dyke did yesterday and not get sent off. But I mean, Anthony Taylor's looking at that. How's that not at least a yellow card for Virgil Van Dyke? I just do not understand it. The penalty on Martinelli. I think, again, when the referee doesn't give that in real time, then I'm not sure VAR, it's not, it's, you slow it down so many times and it's like, does he get touched on the ball? Does he not? I'm not sure. I, it's, I'm much more angry about this than the penalty decision in the first half, I have to say, because this is just never a foul in a million years. It's not. I don't care how, who says it is that we're probably going to have to listen to for the next hour. I mean, 
24 hours or so when Sky do ref watch and all of that sort of stuff. That is not a foul. Just like the penalty for West Ham against Man United was not a penalty. This has been a bit ranty, hasn't it? It has been a bit ranty. I'm sorry for that. It is Monday morning anyway, and it was a big, big game. Um, so reaction-wise for Mikel Arteta on now being five points off Man City at the top of the table. He says, well, you don't want to be in that position. You want to be five points ahead, but this is where we are. And again, this team, it's alive. The team wants it. I feel it every single day. The players that cannot play, they are upset. They are not playing. The ones that get injured, the ones that are in a good moment, things will turn up and we'll be a better place. We certainly are on if our Arsenal experiencing bad luck. He says, no, this is football. Circumstances are going to make us better. And they are making us better. So if we're able to do, if we're able to be where we are and competing the manner that we do, I see the team and I have no doubt. Three days before I told you we were going to be flying on Sunday and we started flying and we're the better team by far, but we needed to grab the points today to make a reflection of where we are and where we want to be. We couldn't do it for sure. Um, uh, we are, but we are there. I, I think Arsenal are experiencing bad luck. I know Mikel is very keen not to l sort of be seen to be looking for excuses for some of the drop points this season. But Arsenal definitely had not had the rubber to green. It's impossible to look at where they've dropped points this season and think they've not had a bit of bad luck. The two send-ins off against City and against Brighton um, when they were leading both of those games. Very unlucky red cards, which we won't see again for any other team. Um, Bournemouth, they were just poor really and yes they got themselves sent off uh, got Saliba sent off and not real too many complaints about the Bournemouth one yesterday definitely some bad luck involved against there the injuries are just rotten luck as well so they are experiencing bad luck they're not getting the breaks and it is affecting them at the moment they've got a really huge week coming up starting at the weekend you know Newcastle away Inter away Chelsea away given what's going on at the moment injuries wise it's a lot it's a horrible week it's a real it's a week you just do not want to have but Arsenal have got to do it. They've got to find a way to get through this week and get some points on the board because five points is a big gap to Man City. It's far from insurmountable. I think about February time last season, Arsenal were about five points behind City and within a few weeks, they were suddenly ahead of them. Um, so it can all turn around, no doubt about it. Um, it's far from an ins insurmountable lead at the moment, but it is a lead when you look at the lead table that is a, is it's growing and with these two away games to come up, it could potentially be even larger in about a fortnight's time. So it's just a way of, you just want Arsenal to stay in contention at this period and get the players back and still be there or thereabout, not a huge gap away. Because I still think this Arsenal team, when everyone is fit, is right up there and can, will push all the way for the league title. But they've just got to find a way of getting through this really horrible period at the moment. Uh, they're doing it. They've only lost one game, it has to be said, but certainly some really costly drop points in there as well. And yesterday did feel a little bit like two drop points, given the uh, the lead that they had so late on in the game. I mean, this was another huge moment for Arsenal. Gabriel going off at 2-1. Does that goal go in, that second goal go in? If Gabriel's on the pitch, I don't think it does. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the player ratings. Um, but I don't think that goes in if Gabriel's on the pitch. You know, no Saliba, no Gabriel. There's a picture, if you look on YouTube, of him last night. Gabriel has got his leg sort of wrapped up in that leg brace. Um, we don't know yet how bad it is or what the problem is. Obviously, Mikel wasn't sure when he was speaking after the game. He says, I don't know, but he couldn't, couldn't run. That's what he said straight away. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's a knee joint or the ankle. They are assessing him right now. And asked if it was a risk to play Timber, who also went off. He said, we've done everything we possibly could to accelerate that process. He was so willing. The team medical staff done amazing work. We gave ourselves a chance to compete. I don't know the extent of the injury, if there is one. Um, and he said, it's the same with big... Gabby, I mean, Timber just looked more like cramp than anything else. Hopefully that was the case. I mean, you could see, I mean, they he worked, he tried so hard. He was up against Salah, of course. I thought he did really well in the first half. Second half, he understandably tired. You could see that. He was struggling to keep pace with Salah. He was cramping up. He was struggling to run and had to go off in the end. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just sort of just every single week it seems to be building up, doesn't it? Injury after injury. And, it's, and they find it really, really difficult. But as I said, you've just got to get through this period. And they are just about doing it. But they are paper thin now. The squad is paper thin. It'll be really interesting to see what Mikel Arteta does against Preston in the in the Carabao Cup on Wednesday night. Because you would think that he's just not going to take a risk on anyone, given the circumstances at the moment and the week have got Arsenal have got coming up. It'll be an interesting starting lineup. That is for sure. 
Okay, player ratings wise, now moving on to this one. Um, I gave David Raya seven, didn't really have too much to do, couldn't really do anything with the goals, but when he was called into action, I thought he did everything pretty well. Thomas Party was exceptional at right back. Uh, just really good up against someone like Luis Diaz. You re I did worry, I have to say, and Liverpool would target in Diaz early on. They looked to try and exploit Thomas Party, I think, but very, very quickly they became aware that they weren't going to be able to do that. I thought Thomas was excellent. The amount of jewels he won. I think he won more jewels in that game yesterday than any other player in the Premier League across the whole weekend. 13 or something. He was brilliant, Thomas Party. It was a hell of a performance. Gave him a nine. Ben White, I thought, was excellent as well. Obviously, got the assist for Saka. I thought he played really well in that centre-back role. Gave him an eight. Gabriel and Timber, I gave sevens. Declan Rice, best performance this season by a mile from Declan Rice. I thought it was absolutely exceptional playing in that six role that so many people, for some reason, seem to think he can't play in. I thought he was brilliant. He won so many tackles. Balls, some brilliant passing as well from him. Um, I loved Declan Rice's performance yesterday. thought him and Thomas Partey were by far the standout performers on the pitch. Marino really encouraging Mikel Marino, I thought. He had made that mistake early on when he let the ball roll under his foot and you're like, oh no, don't don't be doing that, Mikel. But he recovered from that and he just had an excellent game. It was really encouraging to see. I gave him an eight. See, great goal, classic Marino goal. And what sort of goal we're expecting him to get a fair few of this season, back post headers. Um, but some lovely touches. I mean, that touch when he pulled that, pulled that ball down out of the air, that crossfield pass, just exceptional technique from him. Saka, what more can you say? Superb from Saka. Uh, gave him an eight. Martinelli, Trossard were on the... I didn't think they were bad by any means. I just thought the average performance from the two of them gave them a six and Havertz, I gave a seven. Uh, um, substitutes who came on, Kivior and Lewis Skelly were the two really interesting ones. I thought, I actually thought Kivior played well. I thought he was aggressive. I thought he went and won headers as he did for the goal that was ruled out. Um, he did get exposed. Both of them, him and Lewis Skelly, got caught out for the goal, for the second goal. Obviously, Lewis Skelly went on the attack, on the counter-attack. Martinelli was going. Lewis Skelly played him in. Um, Martinelli couldn't beat Canate. Canate, I thought, was fantastic, by the way, for Liverpool. Um, he couldn't beat Canate. The ball got recycled. Uh, on the transition suddenly Lewis Skelly was out of position Kivior I thought had his body position a little bit wrong and Liverpool exploited it it was a brilliant ball by Trent and um, Nunes ran in behind in the space vacated by Kivior and Skelly and obviously played in Salah and Salah's never missing that but I thought the two of them take that goal out of it I thought they adjusted really well interesting again that Lewis Skelly was preferred at left back rather than Zinchenko which says a lot about I think what Arteta sees when he's looking at those two players nowadays um, when Yeri came on, Jesus came on late on, maybe, as I said earlier on, they could have come come on a little bit earlier in that game before the equaliser went in. Uh, but I did think, I did wonder, certainly with Ethan, whether the fact Lewis Skelly was on the pitch already, Mikel was a bit worried about having two 18-year-olds on the pitch in a game like that. But yeah, those are my player ratings. Party and Rice to two standouts. Uh, it could be a flip of the coin who was man of the match out of those two. I thought they were both absolutely excellent. Right, just moving on to some of your reaction before I wrap this one up for today. Elizabeth says, today was super disappointed and exhausting, disappointed in dropping points, not necessarily by how the boys played. Thought Declan, Thomas and Ben really stepped up. Great goal by Saka. Not sure why I watched the replays on the referee's calls because it just makes me angry all over again. Hoping Gabriel and Timber are okay as the next run of games is nerve-wracking. To speak on LFC, I thought they were poor today. Arsenal are the ones who let them back in the game, especially the VVD goal. Heard Slot speak to NBC and he kind of reminds me of when Ange started last year and many people were in awe of him. I feel like they could definitely have a rude awakening in the coming weeks. Hoping we get players back soon so we can go on and run a game and catch up some points. Kingar33 says it's puzzling why Arsenal chose to adopt a more defensive stance when we were ahead against Liverpool in the second half. This decision allowed them to gain a foothold in the game at our expense. We were in the lead twice, but we couldn't hold on. It's disappointing to drop two points in a match. We started off brightly, but unfortunately, we couldn't maintain the momentum when it mattered most. I just do think there are mitigating circumstances in that. I just think it was inevitable with everything that happened, with what was going on in the defence. You lead in 2-1. I just think you're always going to... You're always going to try and protect that defence who was so makeshift against the Liverpool side. And again, the one time when they really did bomb forward to try and to try and get themselves a third goal, they got exposed by it and got picked off and conceded the equaliser. So I do think, I, I'm, I wasn't overly puzzled by the more defensive stance. I'm not even sure that was a more defensive stance. I also just think they were so tired 
um, and so threadbare that it was just inevitable again that Liverpool were going to get more control in that second half. But I didn't think they were causing Arsenal any problems, really, apart from the goal. Uh, Gordon says, more like it today, Charles scored two great goals and some top performance and almost fit Saka, got man of the match and scored a typical Saka goal. What a pass from White. Party was immense, fought for everything. I was impressed with Marino too. Just a shame we're sitting off teams after we go ahead. Should continue to push them back, but maybe the injuries cause disruption. Hope Gabby can recover for next weekend. James will be chuffed that Palace are on the charge for the top four. Yeah, Crystal Palace watch. They actually got a win. Unbelievable. James Benj will be very, very happy. And they got a win against a certain Spurs side as well, which makes it even funnier. Mad Max says, let's all give some praise to Thomas Party. Another match where Party has played out of position today. Another match sees another great display from him. His composure and ability to win the ball back is second to none in our team. Then you add his ability to progress the ball forward and find his teammates under pressure as ace. Recent form should be acknowledged and spoken about by all, and he continues to show his true quality in class. Couldn't say it any better. Thought he was fantastic. I thought he's been Arsenal's best player for the last few weeks. Um, was a little bit worried when I saw him in right back. Not so much because he was playing right back, but I just wanted him in midfield because he's been playing so well. So I was a bit worried when I saw the lineup with him at right back, but I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, just as he has been for the last few weeks. Serves huge amounts of credit for that. And he's really, really looking back to his best Thomas party right now. Pro baller, I think that is, says once again, the referee and performance is what we're going to talk about. Van Dijk on Havertz, deliberate kick out twice, no action. Penalty not given for Martinelli getting wiped out. Delaying the restart. Did Liverpool player get booked for it? No. Goal ruled out for a, quote, foul that Liverpool didn't even complain for. Ridiculous incompetence continues to dominate the headlines this season. And it's costing Arsenal points. Again, just like Mad Max above you. Couldn't really... Uh, agree anymore with most of your points there. Just incompetence, poor officiating, substandard officiating, and he's letting the Premier League down. And we saw it once again yesterday, not just at Arsenal, but in other games as well. Right, that's it from me today, everyone. Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Apologies, it's been a bit ranty, but I've really wanted to get it off my chest, I think, after um, yesterday's events and just reading and watching the rubbish that has been spoken about it afterwards. So, yeah, just wanted to have a bit of a... Well, I didn't want to have a bit of a rant, but it's turned into a bit of a rant. So, yeah, sorry for about that. But I'll be back tomorrow. Much more cheery as we start to look ahead to that Preston game and a chance to see some young, exciting children uh, in action. Because, let's face it, they are children right now, 16, 17, however old they are. And they're going to be playing for the Arsenal on Wednesday night in that game against Preston. And that'll be exciting to watch. I love the first round of the game against Bolton. Hopefully we can have more of the same in this one. So we'll be back tomorrow to talk all about that. Till then, have a brilliant day, everyone. Speak to you soon. Up the Arsenal. <laughs>